Hey VC, what's going on? Welcome back. This is Hubtunes. I am Mike. Uh, taking a break from doing a major, what, what does Mazzy call it? The big shift. <laughs> you see you got an empty little uh, square back there. I had three empty squares and I'm filling them up. I'm moving everything down one so I can fit my, I'm trying to fit all my mobile fidelities and my uh, one steps all on like the same shelves. And I'm taking all my, taking all my records out of the, all my one steps, I'm taking out of the boxes and putting them in plastic sleeves and putting them right next to the box. So hopefully I listen to them more because um, probably like you guys, I don't listen to box sets very much because I hate opening the box. So maybe pulling the record out and uh, protecting it in the sleeves will help me listen a little bit more. So shifting everything around, the jazz section, which you guys can't see, is got a two big empty <laughs> cubes. So I'm gonna I'm redoing that whole section too. And <laughs> anyone who's done this knows it is quite the project, especially after you have a few drinks and start listening to the music, because you can't you can't do the big shift without pulling out records and listening to them. And <laughs> then you get distracted, and the next thing you know, you're pulling out more records than you really need to be, and you guys, I'm absolutely sure you guys can all re can relate. So I'm taking a break from the big shift and I'm going to do a concert review. Um, this one is uh, Gary Newman, live in Chicago and Milwaukee. Um, Gary Newman, um, guys know his, first of all, if you guys want to see more Gary Newman records than I'm gonna show, if you wanna hear more ramblings about Gary Newman, some of them accurate, some of them inaccurate, you can check out my two Gary Newman video, three, there's three Gary Newman videos. Uh, just go into the playlists and look Gary Newman videos. They're right there. Um, I think they're called Searching for a New Man. Uh, so check them out, there's three. Uh, a couple of them are kinda long, cause there's a, he's got, a lot of records, um, I think 24 studio records, or 24 total. Um, so this will just be a quick overview of the concert and I'll show a couple of his uh, most recent records and um, we'll get out of here in hopefully less than 15 minutes, but we're already three minutes in because I'm rambling. Uh, Gary Newman, everyone in the United States knows him as a one hit wonder. He was not a one hit wonder in the UK. He had many, many hits. Um, his first three albums, probably the most famous, his Two Boy Army, uh, Replicas, which is my favorite of his first uh, three albums. It's very punky. It's just kind of a punky new wave record. I love this record. This is probably my favorite of all his records. And then the big one, everyone knows. This is The Pleasure Principle. Um, Cars is on here, his only U.S. hit. Um, but there's other great songs on here. Metal is on here, which was a huge hit in the U.K. Fantastic new wave masterpiece and his follow-up to his follow-up to that is telecon great record also this is a really nice uh but on beggar's banquet this comes with a uh a little uh seven inch single uh great great record also another new wave masterpiece but these two these three albums were huge for him uh put him on top of the charts making millions and millions of dollars um, his album after Telecon was Dance, which is also one of my favorites. I actually prefer Dance to Telecon. Um, I, I love Dance. I think it's really good, very underrated. So those are his first uh, three records. Um, huge in the UK. He would continue on with his career. Those are the only ones that here in America that we recognize. Um, the UK Gary Newman fans are already writing notes and going to tear me apart for anything I say because that's the way dedicated fans are. I totally get it. Um, but in the in the US, obviously, not real successful after Telecon. Probably not even after Cars, really. Uh, but he's been making records. He's had some ups and downs, um, making great records. Like I said, I think he's up to like 24 records and so many live records. Um, one great thing about Gary is he releases a live album from almost every tour that he does. Um, some call it a cash uh, grab, but I call it great for the fans. I, I, I see no reason not to do that. I'm not gonna show any of his live albums um, <clears throat> in this video, but I did do one of the, my previous videos, I did show all his live records. So you can check that out. I think that was the third one, the third video in the series. So check that out if you want to see his live stuff. Um, 
he has been back. Um, he lives in L.A. and he records in L.A. Um, he, it, he, he has developed a new sound um, over the last 20 years. I mean, this is nothing new to Gary Newman fans. Uh, great records, records like Pure. Uh, my, one of my, Pure is one of my favorites, Jagged, and um, Dead Sun Rising, which is another one of my favorites. And then he um, had a couple other ones, and he came back with this one. This is Splinter, uh, Tales of a, what is it, Tales? Songs from a Broken Mind. And this is a great record, absolute great record. And this thing, live was absolutely spectacular when he toured with this record everyone just was blown away absolutely blown away uh next up he came back with this this is um this is savage songs from a broken world this is my autographed copy from when i met him uh great record this went to i believe number two in the uk uh splinter also charted really high in the uk he's been charting in the uk for years uh, but this was the highest one, uh, probably his biggest selling record in decades, absolute decades. Uh, My Name is Ruin is on here, Go, um, Ghost Nation, Bed of Thorns, absolutely really, really good. If you're going to if you're gonna jump into his new stuff, I would start with this. This would be a great jumping in point. Splinter also, very good. Uh, but I would start with this, it's a little more accessible. Uh, he has more of an industrial sound now, uh, not, uh, not so new wave anymore. Uh, but definitely the way to go. And, oh, Jesus, these records are slipping all over. And this is the album that he's touring with. This is uh, Intruder. This is his most recent record. It came out in 2020, 2021. Uh, beginning of 2021. The tour was obviously canceled. His U.S. and U.K. tour were canceled due to COVID. Um, I think it's been canceled. I think it was canceled once or twice. I, it just seems like I've held these tickets for a really long time. Um, but this is a uh, intruder his most recent. Is it my favorite of the most recent three? No, I, I do like it. Um, some of the stuff that he played live was really good. Um, but I would say still, uh, the previous one, Savage is my favorite. Uh, now Splinter is probably my favorite of the most recent three. Um, but definitely Savage is the most accessible. So, uh, this one also autographed and I think, uh, I think I pulled out the gold variant and that's the gold, uh, nice inner, uh, labels there. Uh, solid record. I think if you're going to ask me for my opinion on it, I, which I guess that's why I'm here. Um, I would say he needs to mix it up a little bit on his next record. I don't know if he's planning. There was a rumor this was kind of a trilogy of three records. I don't know if that's true. Um, he does need to mix it up a little bit, maybe come up. I, I, I really like his producer, Aid Fenton, but he might want to look somewhere else and maybe just to get some new ideas and some, just maybe a little, just some new ideas. I mean, all artists need that at some point in their career. So, he's touring with this album, Intruder. Um, great, really good album. Um, he has the same band that he's had um, for the last couple of tours. He did replace his bassist a couple of tours ago. Um, but the new, the new guy's been with him for a while, and he's great. Uh, so, the show is here in Chicago at the Park West, uh, not too far from my home. I drove down actually just because it's tough to get to from public transportation. Uh, it's a little, it's just in a weird spot and there's plenty of parking down there. So I drove down there and uh, it's, a, it's a cool theater. I don't go to a lot of shows there. Um, it's, uh, I, I, I mean, I would go more often. I, I, I don't mind the place. It's actually pretty cool. Uh, it's got a very 70s, late 70s, 80s disco vibe. <laughs> there's a lot of mirrors and there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of, well, there's a giant disco ball. Uh, there's also like levels and they, there's a lot of seating, there, but with table, like booths and stuff. So you can reserve tables and booths. I've never done that. And then there's a small little standing area and there's like, it, it's very, very 80s. Uh, it's not like an ornate theater, from, you know, from days beyond. 
uh, but it's it's great. It's it's a pretty cool place. It's not real big. It has pretty decent sound. I have to admit, it's got very good sound, uh, and he sounded great. Um, on uh, it was a Monday night that I went to see him. So I go down to the Park West. Um, I had a brief uh, VC meetup. I met up with Logan uh, Logan from Swellheads Network and now Murmur in, Murmur from Hell. Uh, we've talked a lot in uh, different vari on Instagram and and uh, and uh, YouTube and uh, I'm standing there. I knew he was going to the show, so I kind of kept an eye out for him. Uh, we bumped into each other. We hung out for pretty much most of the show. He lives pretty far out in the suburbs, so he um, he bugged out uh, just before the end of the show just to get a head start on the road. He he lives a good an hour and 15, hour and 20 outside of the city. So don't mind, <laughs> don't blame him. <laughs> I actually didn't stay for the final encore because I also wanted to bug out before the crowds did. So um, this great album, he's touring with this. Um, oh, I'll show you the opening band. Well, it's not a band. It, the opening girl, he always brings interesting, um, very uh, electronic uh, synth based, openers with him and this year and I feel like I've I feel like I've seen this girl before he may have had her on a different tour something about her seemed very familiar so um I um I picked up her cd she is called I Speak Machine this is her cd War um it's very interesting I actually kind of liked her um <laughs> this is a nice little package of for a pretty cool CD. Um, I am getting all kinds of messages here. Okay. Um, so I picked up her CD just to support her and everything. And uh, I listened to it in the car the other day. And uh, it's really good. It's really, really good. Uh, she's very electronic, very synth-based. And it's just her. She does it. She pre-programs everything. And she, she's got a really, really good voice. So I, I checked, picked her up. Great CD. I Speak Machine. Back to Gary Newman. Um, so the opener was good, and then uh, he came out and he did. Um, he opened with the title track from Intruder, and then he did uh, Metal off of the uh, Principal uh, Principal album, and it was just a solid mix of a lot of classics and new stuff. Uh, he only did three songs from this record, which kind of surprised me. Usually, when he tours, he will do five, at least five new songs off of the current record. He did not. Uh, he only did, about, I think, three. And then everything else was based off of, um, um, off of Savage and the previous one, Splinter. And he did mix in some of the older stuff. Uh, he did Down in the Park and Metal and what else? He did Halo off of the Jagged album. Did some really cool stuff. And it was a smoking, smoking show. Uh, absolutely phenomenal. Uh, he had energy. He, the band is great. The band is so good. His guitarist, Steve, is a monster. He's very entertaining. He, he's great to watch. And it, it, just an all-around great show. And I, I left and I, I said, that's exactly what I expected. And it was perfect. So then the next night I drive up to Milwaukee to see him at the, the Rave slash Eagles Ballroom. Eagles Ballroom is a giant, like a, like a ballroom theater. It's old. The building is very old. It's on the campus of, uh, I think it's on the campus of Marquette in Milwaukee. And I've been to the Eagles Ballroom before and it's awful. Uh, the sound is terrible. The layout is terrible. And there's really no good thing about it. But this was in a place called The Rave, which is a smaller theater underneath and behind the giant, the bigger uh, theater and it was really cool I'd never been there before it was pretty cool I posted some um, I posted some photos on my Instagram if you guys follow me hub tunes um, and it was filling up um, it was a good crowd I swear they know I'm making a videos it was a good crowd um, I was gonna hang out in more towards the back for this show for the for the Chicago show, I was right up front. I was probably like, I mean, I could almost touch the stage a little bit further back, but it, it was it was kind of cool. I, I, I wasn't gonna go up front, and then I noticed that like people weren't really 
going up front. <laughs> so I was like, well, I could just walk up there and maybe stay up there for like five or six songs and then head back and then ditch out early because I wanted to get the road back to Chicago. It was raining horribly, absolutely horrible rainstorms. I, I driving home, it takes me about an hour and 20 to get home from Milwaukee. It poured the entire way. I mean, down poured. It sucked. You don't care. So um, I, I, I walked up front and I, I walked right up to the, like five minutes before he was coming on stage, I walked right up to the stage and just like put my arms up. I was like, okay, I'll hang out here. And um, his wife, Gemma, and one of his daughters, I think it was Echo, is one of his daughters, they were standing like right in front of me, like three feet in front of me. And he came out and... I mean, I've seen this, this would, would have been my 21st time seeing him. <laughs> so I'm kind of familiar with, you know, him and his general demeanor on stage and stuff. And um, you could tell right away something wasn't right. Um, he, he, he came out same, almost the same set, almost the same set. Uh, he did mix up like two songs. <laughs> he interchanged like two songs. Uh, but basically the same set, same opener, Intruder, and then uh, uh, Metal. And by the end of Metal, I... I, I, I you could just tell something wasn't right. I mean, he had energy, but something was off. And then he, then he went into another song, and right in the middle of the song, he stopped playing it. And he came up to the microphone, and he's like, desperately trying to speak. And he's like, I, he, he's very apologetic. He's like, I can't do this. I my laryngitis. I thought I could do this. You know, I, I sound check went well and everything's been fine since. And I really thought, I think I could get through this show, but I, I'm embarrassed and I'm so sorry, so sorry. And he's like, but I'm going to keep going. And he, they started the song again and he got through the song. And at the end of the song, he, he came over to the side of the stage where I was standing like right there. And, um, it was talking to his wife and the band meanwhile has started a new song and he's just talking to his wife and then he comes out and he, you could see he was struggling through that song and then he came back over to his wife after that song and he had like, you know, throat spray, I don't know, banaka, <laughs> I don't know, whatever, like some kind of, um, something to soothe his throat. So he's spraying that in his mouth and then he went and did another song and then, he kept going on back and forth. You could tell he just was struggling the whole show. He made it through. He did the whole show. And then um, it it was it was not good. I mean, it was fine, but you could you just knew he was really hurting and he was not happy. He was definitely not happy. Uh, so the show ended and um, I I just I hopped in my car and drove home and then the next day we hear that he's pretty much canceled the next two weeks. He tested positive for COVID. Uh, several band members tested positive for COVID and a couple of people in the crew also tested positive for COVID. So they canceled, I think, four shows, three or four shows total. And um, I think tonight they're back on and uh, they will be uh, back on the tour. And they rescheduled all those shows that they canceled. They're tacked on at the end. So that was good. I mean, at least, you know, they did the right thing and they, uh, you know, if you can't perform, you can't perform. And, um, yeah, it sucks because these poor people, I think it was Omaha, Vancouver, and one other city, uh, they didn't get to see Gary. And they've been waiting a long time. If you had tickets for this concert, you've been waiting a very long time. Uh, but so overall, uh, great experience. Uh, I, I, I love Gary Newman. You guys probably know that if you follow this channel, you, you know, I, I, I absolutely love him. And, um, I, yeah, I would go again. So, um, great uh, album, great tour. Glad he's back on the road. And I think that's about it. Um, well, uh, yeah, I think that's about it. Really solid, really solid. I mean, any Gary Newman fan, I mean, if you're going to dig in to his early stuff, I would do with, you know, obviously uh, The Pleasure Principle and Telecon and Replicas and... Yeah, the newer stuff, Dead Sun Rising is terrific. Pure is great. Probably Splinter and Savage would be your best bets. Um, I don't know. That's about it, guys. Uh, I got a couple more concerts coming up. So going to see Nick Waterhouse tomorrow night. I don't know when I'm going to post this video. <laughs> I'm going to see Nick Waterhouse. And that'll be my next concert review after this. Uh, he's at the City Winery, which is not my favorite place, but... 
it'll be fine. He's a terrific, terrific musician. So you guys take care. We're under 20 minutes. Oh no, now we're over 20 minutes. <laughs> be well. Questions, comments, snide remarks in the uh, comment section. Be well.